And welcome, <laughs> welcome everybody. I always wanted to have my own theme music coming in. Um, hey, it's great to chat with you. Time is the one thing that is constant for all of us. We only have so much of it, and I absolutely appreciate you joining me uh, for this live stream. At CBT Nuggets, we are on the cusp of finishing our CCNA content. It is, uh, it's going to be the de facto standard. I have never been so excited about uh, content before because, you know, I got my first CCI back in 2001, like, you know, forever ago, and I got another one in 2003. But every time, it's so cool, every time I have the opportunity to go and revisit something, I learn a little bit more, or I think, oh, yeah, that's, and it, it, it I finally have the ability, I think, to look at a topic, uh, whether it's routing or switching or first hop redundancy protocols or whatever it is, and then say, oh yeah, I totally get this. And I think I have a way of presenting it in a way that other people will really get it as well. So um, let me share with you our strategy. Then I'm going to ask you a question. In fact, let me ask you a question first. And, uh, and then as you answer that, I've got some help and questions today. As you answer that, uh, we'll follow your uh, your lead here. So this is a background. This is a let me bring up a picture here. Let me share with you my screen. Um, this is studio. This is a behind the scenes look at what we're currently creating. Uh, this is a skill, a collection of videos on the topic of first hop redundancy protocols. And what that means is that a first hop redundancy protocol is every client, every device on a network is probably going to talk off of that local network. They need a default gateway. But if we have a single router acting as that default gateway and that router goes down and there's a problem with it, the user's out of luck. So that's when we have a first hop redundancy protocol that can come in and we can have two or more routers provide fault tolerance. Now, that's a fancy way for saying that if one device on our network fails, the network will still function. It'll tolerate that fault. So that concept is also known as fault tolerance or high availability is would you like to see uh, in a presentation right now? So I have permission uh, from CBT Nuggets to share with you a video or two. And uh, if you want to take a, a moment and look at these topics, they basically there's an introduction and then there's one on an overview of what FHRP is. And then I've got demos and labs on three of them and then a summary lab that's gonna reinforce it on a production network. So take a moment and you can just vote by numbers. Just vote for the number you'd like to see. And if you wanna vote for two, that's fine also. And I can just take the the, the way you can see all this. And uh, that's what that beeping is in the background. So I'm gonna put some music on just for a few moments. And then let me get your feedback on which of these videos you'd like a sneak peek because these have not. All right, and to be clear, I'm hoping that Josh is gonna poll those for me and tell me which ones he thinks is gonna be like the uh, number one vote based on the feedback and the input there. So Josh, if you could take a look at that with me and and make a, a guesstimation on which one would be the best, that would be absolutely great. I think I lost Josh. Oh no. Okay, four and six. So I was saying four and six would be the uh, the two that they're voting for the most. Okay, great. Um, well, let's do, uh, let's do, wow, six is 10 minutes long. Let's do six. Let me give you a, a little preface real quick then on what FHRP is all about. And then we'll go ahead and we'll look at video, at video six together. That'd be great. So the cool thing about FHRP, and let me get my, some uh, drawing tools out here. And give me one moment to bring that up. There we go. Um, 
so let's imagine that Bob is right here, and I just moved my whole screen. Give me one second. There we go. And and hold on, my pen is not cooperating with me. Oh no, oh no. That's okay. I have other tools. I will pull one out. Let's see here. Let me bring up a painter layer. And that will work for us. Great. All right. So let's imagine we have Bob right here. So Bob is this user, and Bob is on at 10.16.0.10. That's his IP address. And he has a default gateway, and that default gateway is this core one switch. And so the problem is, if this core switch goes away, Bob is out of luck because he's going to lose his default gateway. So with a first hop redundancy protocol, what we do is we have core one and core two buddy up, and they create this virtual new IP address. Let's say for imagine dot three as the default gateway. So the cool thing is, instead of having Bob point to dot one or dot two for its default gateway, we have it point to dot three. And then between core one and core two, they talk to each other and they will support that virtual IP address in the event that the other one goes away. So it's like a team effort to support a default gateway. The bottom line is that a user who's on the network is going to have a default gateway that will probably work even if there's a single device failure on the network. So having said that, let me go ahead and bring up Studio. And let's go ahead and play Video 6, which was one of our requests. So I'll go ahead and launch this. I'll turn up the volume. And let me size this up also. Give me one moment for that. Now, up to this point, we've had some opportunity to see three different first hop redundancy protocols. VRRP, HSRP, and gateway load balancing protocol. And so it's time now to take those skills that we've learned and apply those to a production network. So we get a, a phone call from Bob. Help design and implement some fault tolerance for people's default gateway, including people on VLAN 10 in the production network. So let's go to Bob's office. We'll take a look at the topology. We'll come up with a plan, and then we'll do some hands-on lab to implement that plan. So we walk into Bob's office, and he shows us this diagram here of the Arizona topology, and we confirm with him, now you want us to help provide fault tolerance for the default gateway that clients are using. And he says, yes, absolutely yes. So let's start off by taking a look at who we're serving here. So we have this VLAN, VLAN 10, and we have a bunch of users in that VLAN. And for VLAN 10, the IP address assignment we have there is 10.16.0.0 with a 24-bit mask. And currently, for VLAN 10, we have these two multi-layer switches. Here on the top is Core 1. And any guesses uh, about this one right here? Yeah, Core 2. Awesome. So Core 1 and Core 2 both have, these are both multi-layer switches, they have Layer 3 switched virtual interfaces inside of VLAN 10. So they both have an interface VLAN 10 and their IP addresses respectively for their VLAN 10 interface is 10.16.0.1 for Core 1 and 10.16.0.2 for Core 2, both with a 24-bit mask. So we just imagine one of those computers off of this access layer switch. Maybe this PC is 10.16.0. And we'll give it the last octet of 10. Great, slash 24. And for the default gateway, instead of pointing to dot one or dot two, we can set up a third IP address to be used for fault tolerance purposes to be supported by hot standby router protocol. So the virtual address that we're going to add is 10.16.0.3. So what we would do is we would go to each of these VLAN 10 interfaces and use the commands to enable hot standby router protocol, including this virtual IP address. And then we want to train the clients on that VLAN 10 that for their default gateway, they should use dot three as their default gateway. And then between core one and core two with the hot standby router protocol, they would provide that fault tolerance for that virtual IP address. Now there's one other element that I would like to do in this lab as we apply this, and that is I don't want to use the standard layer to address. So normally when we support an address like 10.16.0.3 behind the scenes, there's a virtualized layer 2 address as well. So the router that's active for this IP address also supports that corresponding layer 2 address. We can actually tell hot standby router protocol to actually use the layer 2 address that's already associated, the burned in address that's associated with the existing interface. So in the lab, what I'd like to do is also implement that command, and I'll walk you through that when we get to the interfaces for VLAN 10 on Core 1 and Core 2.
So let's jump in the lab. We're going to use our admin computer, which is DC NUG. We'll launch MT Putty and we'll open up consoles to Core 1 and Core 2. So here we are at DC NUG and I've got MT Putty open and I've got a tab open for Core 1 and Core 2. If you need to open a tab, you just click on the servers and grab the device you need and open a tab and away you go. All right, let's start on Core 1. And one of the things we might want to do to start off with is find out what interfaces are up and their IP addresses before we start configuring. That way we can verify we're on the right interface to begin with. So we'll do a show IP interface brief. And because it's a multi-layer switch, we have lots of output here. We could thin this by doing the same command, up arrow key, space, a pipe symbol, and then space, and then we'll just do an exclude. So exclude says, okay, I'll show you everything from the normal output, except for any lines that have what you're about to exclude. So if we want to exclude any lines that have the word unassigned, because we don't want to see that in the output, we can just put a few characters of unassigned, press enter, and it will just surgically remove that from the output. So here is the interface that we are going to focus on, the VLAN 10 layer 3 interface. It's up, it has the IP address of 10.16.0. Fantastic, that's where we're going to add the configuration on that interface for HSRP. So we'll go into configuration mode, we'll go to interface config for VLAN 10, and then here we'll go ahead and do the standby command, give it a question mark, let's go ahead and specify use BIA for use burned in address, and then let's implement standby for group 10, and we can use a number here, if you want to use the same number as the VLAN, that's really handy, so we'll do that. So we use group 10, and then specify the IP address being supported is 10.16.0.3, and press enter. And it says, Keith, you forgot the D. All right, I can fix that. So we'll go ahead and add the D. Boom, there we go. Now we can do a do show standby, press enter. So at the moment, it's going through a few states to identify whether or not there's other speakers out there and if it should be the active router for that group. And here in a moment, there it is, we should have the message indicating we are now the active router. So now we'll just do pretty much the same commands in VLAN 10 interface over on Core 2. So let's go over to Core 2. We'll go into configuration mode. Let's do a do show IP interface brief. We'll exclude anything that has word unassigned in it. And there's our VLAN 10 interface, great. So we'll go into interface VLAN 10. And we'll type in standby. And we'll go ahead and say use burned in address. And then standby, group 10, IP 10.16.0.3, boom. And we are done. So we can let that cook in the background. We already confirmed that core one is the active router. So let's go to our client PC and change the default gateway to point to that new virtual IP address for HSRP, which is dot three. So here in the lab, we'll go ahead and log on to our client PC and let's configure the network interface. On this version of Windows 10, you can right click on the Windows icon, bottom left hand corner, and then there's a menu option right here for network connections. That's one quick way to get there. And then we can right click on the network 1016 and then from the drop down, select properties. And then double click on the internet protocol version four to change its properties. And we're gonna change the default gateway to dot three. And then we'll click on okay. And okay again. And let's bring up a command prompt. So we can right click on the windows icon, bottom left hand corner, bring up a command prompt that way. Then we'll type IP config, just to confirm that our default gateway is 10.16.0.3. And also let's verify that we can ping it. 10.16.0.3. So whoever the active router is for HSRP is responding to us at the moment. Fantastic. Also, if we did an ARP-A to look at the ARP cache, we can see something pretty cool here. And that is that the, the, for the layer three addresses of dot one and dot three. So if we did a ping to something behind core one and core two, and if we take a look at our topology over here, on this network, we've got 10.16.6.5. That is the IP address on R1 here. So we can use that as a target. So we can ping from our PC, which should go through our default gateway, which is dot three being supported by core one. And then we can route it over here to R1, who's our destination for that ping. So the key here is let's use this as our target for testing. So we'll do a ping of 10.16.6.5. And that works, that's great. And let's also do a trace. And here's how we spell trace in Windows. It's T-R-A-C-E-R-T -E space dash D for don't bother doing name resolution. And then the IP address that we're tracing to, 10.16.6.5. And that's gonna show us the path. So it went through core one, 
at 101601. That was the actual router that moved it for us. And then it hit R1 at dot five. Perfect. So that was a test of our fault tolerance though. Let's go back to core one and we'll take that VLAN 10 interface, which is currently active for the HSRP group and we'll just disable it completely. And then we'll watch and see whether or not core two and its VLAN 10 interface takes over as the active router for the HSRP group, which it should. Let's check it out. So up here on our admin computer, logged on to core one, I'll make sure we're inside of VLAN 10 interface configuration mode. And let's go ahead and do a shutdown and press enter. And that's gonna take out that interface, any relationships that that interface may have been maintaining with other devices, with OSPF or other protocols. And it's also gonna take out the HSRP service that it used to be active for. So we can see that right here. The HSRP change, it went from active to something less than active, meaning it's not doing the job anymore. And if we go over to core two, we have a console message here indicating that it is now the active router for the HSRP group. So if we go back to the client PC, we should be able to go ahead and do a ping to that same address. That works. We should be able to do a trace route and we'll just use some up and down arrow keys to get there. We'll do the trace route, but this time, the first hop, check it out. The first hop is 10.16.0.2 because the core two multi-layer switch is now the active router on its VLAN 10 interface supporting the customers. So in this case study, we've taken our knowledge and skills regarding setting up or configuring some first hop redundancy protocols, and we've applied it to our mock CCNA production network. So if you've completed this, whether it's here in the virtual labs or done it on your own gear or in another virtual environment, please give yourself 10 more points as we build towards 100, gaining skills along the way. I've had a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you in the very next video. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to Thank you for viewing. All right, <laughs> so that was uh, video six. Let me make sure the video button's on. So that was video six of the seven videos as part of the first top redundancy protocols. I had a lot of fun making these. And one of the big things that we did uh, that's uh, different than some things in the past is we actually included many more labs so that not only can a student uh, dive in and say, okay, Help me understand the need for an FHRP, a first hop redundancy protocol, understand the concepts of how it works, but then be trained on VRRP, HSRP, gateway load balancing protocol, and have labs on all three of those. They'll just reinforce the concepts and how to look at it. So um, Josh, there was a, um, a question about VTP or about the, uh, the version of HSRP. And on this switch in the lab, I'd have to go ahead and log in and take a look to see what version it's running. Um, so I don't know, I don't remember off the top of my head what version it is, but whatever the, the default version is, that's what I currently use for the, for the course or for the labs. Um, Josh, are there any other questions that are in the queue that you want to point out for me? And if there are, I'd be happy to go ahead and take them as I try to find my mouse. There it is. Um, also, while, while you're looking at those questions and bringing them forward, uh, I had a chance today to do some peer reviews. At CBT Nuggets, we do peer reviews where we sit down with another trainer and they take a collection of skills like I did with First Top Redundancy Protocols and they'll look at all the videos, we'll watch them together. It's, it's pretty cool. And I had uh, Bart, Bart Castle, sit down with me today and we reviewed the skill on troubleshooting IP networks. Now, where this would come is in the CCNA Blueprint, which I have in my hands. In the CCNA Blueprint, the logical flow is uh, network fundamentals and then on to network access, which is all about layer two and switching and spanning tree and VLANs and trunking, etc. And then IP connectivity, which is all about IP routing and how to set that up and how to make that work and how to verify it. Understanding what the router does based on matches in the routing table and how to interpret it. All really important skills. So anyway, um, I added a skill. Uh, it's like six or seven videos long on troubleshooting. Oh my gosh. Talk about fun. I made four specific labs on troubleshooting and I injected problems in each of them. And then I asked for volunteers from the trainer team at CBT Nuggets to come in and, and uh, do a recording of them live recording the troubleshooting. So I had uh, Knox Hutchinson came in, uh, Jeff Kish came in, and Bart Castle all volunteered. They all have various levels of experience with Cisco, uh, all the way from had a CCNA a while ago to double CCIE. And I didn't, I didn't clue them in on what the problem was. I said, here's the login, here's the topology, 
uh, this PC in Arizona can't ping this PC in Nevada. Go. They did great. And it was fascinating to see the, the walkthrough with their own, you know, every has a slightly different methodology for troubleshooting. And so I included all of that as part of the troubleshooting and IP network skills uh, as part of the content for CCNA. So I, I'm super excited about that. Also today, um, I just finished like 45 minutes ago recording uh, some videos regarding uh, DevNet, DevNet Associate, which uh, Knox Hutchinson and uh, Ben Finkel and I are creating. I'm doing the network portion of that. A lot of great, fun, fun stuff. So I'm going to peek over here just for a moment, see if there's any questions that come up at the last minute that I need to bring up. Josh is saying he doesn't see any at the moment. That's way, way cool. So I want to keep this nice and tight. I enjoy uh, talking with you and, and being able to share the creation of this content as we're creating it and give you, giving you samples of it. And, uh, oh, you know what? Uh, next week, next week at the same bat time, same bat channels, which is 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, I'm going to do another live stream on another skill, some other topic that I've created recently. And there's, there's a laundry list. I've got so many great skills that we've created regarding surrounding CCNA that uh, I look forward to sharing most of them. So this will be recorded as well. So if you want to review this or review that video, you can go back and watch this. And and what else did I want to mention? Um, the live stream next week, same time, same bat time, same bat channel. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed uh, to this channel at, at uh, Keith Barker Networking, the OG of IT, please do so. That way you can get alerts for when new videos are coming out. We'd love to have you join us here. My goal is pretty simple. And that is to assist people who are uh, near the entry level and into professional into really understanding and being able to have the skills to implement and manage networks. And I remember when I started, first started to read. <laughs> what, Keith? Well, when I first started to learn how to read, I remember, that's a memory I have of my father with flashcards uh, helping me understand the words and how to read. And in the same sense with networking, with protocols like ARP, First hop redundancy protocols, OSPF, spanning tree, trunking, layer two switching, VLANs, those are all learned. And we are excited about helping individuals who maybe you've heard those terms, you really want to master them, we want to help you to learn them. And that way, when you go to a job interview and you're sitting down, it's not going to be nervous. Well, I can't control the nervousness, but if they ask you questions about, okay, regarding this network, how does this work? How does that function? Or how would you configure this? You can say with a surety because you've been studying and doing hands-on practice. Oh, well, that's a lot like this, which it works like X, Y, Z, or here's how this routing protocol works, or here's how two OSPF neighbors form an adjacency, or here's what a DR other means inside of OSPF. Or when we're doing trunking, here's how we configure a trunk port, and here's why it's important, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm super excited about you joining me uh, in this journey through the world of CCNA and to be clear, I'm um, talking about the, the new one that we're creating, which is exam 200-301, which is the new, the 2020 version of CCNA, the one CCNA to rule them all. And then once you've mastered that and you know that content, just take that and carry it forward if you want to continue pursuing uh, specializations in the world of professional level, whether it's security or wireless or enterprise, it's all there for the taking. So I'm super glad that you joined me for this, this uh, live stream. I'll get it up online and stored within probably an hour or two if you want to go visit it again or tell a friend. And until we meet each other again in another video, I hope you have a great, great rest of your day. And with that, I'm going to play some outro music for our mutual benefit. <laughs> and uh, that's if I can find it. Hold on a second. It's going to be worth it. Totally worth it. Here we go. And let's do, um, let's do this one. See everybody.